Hello everyone, this is Jozef Nagy here and in this video you will learn how to create a mesh with the block mesh utility in OpenFoam. Here you can see the finished results, some exemplary results of the velocity magnitude, the temperature and the pressure. I have to say, tell you that this case is a very unphysical case but it is good enough because here we want to learn how to use block mesh. And here you see the created meshes, a, a uniform mesh, and then I will show you how to refine your mesh. Now the goals of this tutorial are the following. I want you to understand the block mesh dictionary, how you define the coordinates of the vertices of the geometry, how you define blocks, how you can set the refinement of your mesh, how you can define boundaries and how you execute the command. And I want to also simulate 10 seconds of a flow around the forward step and post process the results. But really I want to concentrate on block mesh in this tutorial. For the simulations we will use the Sonifoam solver. The official description is that it is, it is a transient solver for transonic, supersonic, laminar or turbulent flows of a compressible gas. So this means that the solver is compressible, it is transient, it can both describe laminar and turbulent flows, uh, it is a single phase solver and it is a non-isothermal solver. I do not want to go into the theory here because I want to really concentrate on block mesh so let's just jump into the simulations or into block mesh. I will open up a Nautilus here and as I mentioned in the first tutorial, my installation is in my home, open phone. So check where your installation is and then go into the tutorial folder. Now compressible and sonic foam, laminar and forward step. But uh, as I mentioned uh, before, it is a good idea to have one base case and then make a copy of, of this base case and then do the simulations in this uh, in the copied folder. I will do that in the terminal. I will open up the uh, terminal by pressing Ctrl, Alt and T. I have to navigate into the appropriate folder by typing CD space and then OP and you can fill in the rest of the folder name by pressing Tab. Again OP, Tab and then tutorials, compressible, sonic, foam, and laminar, enter. I type in ls and list the uh, folders. And now we create, uh, we copy this uh, forward step uh, into the same folder. We make a copy of it by typing uh, cp space minus r forward step and forward step underscore one and what this will do is it will copy the case into the uh, another case and um, which we call forward step underscore one and i press now enter if i type ls then here you can see that there is now forward step forward step underscore one if i enter forward step underscore one then you see that here is the um, usual case setup with zero constant and system i go back and i want to jump into block mesh the dictionary for block mesh is in the constant folder and in polymesh if you remember in the first tutorial we used a mesh file and we imported the mesh information from that file. We will not do that here. We will uh, execute the block mesh command. And for the block mesh command, you need a dictionary. And I open up this dictionary. And I want to tell you what you will find in this dictionary. You always find a header. And then several entries like convertometers, vertices, blocks, edges, boundary, and merge patch pairs. And I want to concentrate on some of them here. That we will need for this tutorial for example convert to meters one means that the values that you defined under vertices are given in meters 
if I would uh, type here in 0 0.001, then these values would be in millimeters and block mesh would automatically convert them to meters. But I want to give them in meters. And now uh, I want to explain you the, the entries here on the vertices, blocks, and so on. For that, I will go uh, further here. Here you see the entries, convert to meters, vertices, blocks, edges, boundaries, and merge patch pairs. And I want to concentrate on the entry on these four entries now. These uh, are the entries that we need for this tutorial. So, I explained what convert to meters means, now let's go to vertices. Here you see, I just copied the vertices from here to this presentation. Here you see 4, 8, 12, 16 vertices, 16 coordinates of 16 vertices, and I want to explain those, what those mean. Here you see the coordinate system, system, the x and the y direction, and I will show you here a schematic sketch of uh, your geometry. The first eight vertices have a z coordinate of minus 0 0.05, and then the second eight have a co uh, z coordinate of 0 0.05. So I will concentrate on the first eight and then show you the uh, the rest of the coordinates. The first uh, coordinate, coordinate number 0, is it has an x and y coordinate of 0, so I place it here. Then the second coordinate has an x coordinate of 0 0.6 and the y coordinate of 0, so it's um, shifted a little further uh, in the x direction. Then um, coordinate number 2 has an x coordinate of 0 and the y coordinate of 0 0.2, so it's shifted in the y direction. Coordinate number 3 has an x coordinate of 0 0.6 and a uh, y coordinate of 0 0.2, so it's here. As, uh, coordinate number 4 has an x coordinate of 3 and the y coordinate of 0 0.2, so it's located here. Uh, vertex number uh, 5 has an x coordinate of 0 and a y coordinate of 1, so it's up here. Coordinate number 6 has a y as an x uh, coordinate of 0 0.6 and a y coordinate of 1, so it's here. And uh, coordinate number 7 has an x coordinate of 3 and a y coordinate of 1, so it's here. And the rest of the coordinates have the same x and y coordinates f as uh, the coordinates up here, so it's 0, 0, and 0 0.6, 0, and for, uh, further on, but only the z coordinate is different, so those are shifted in the z direction. This is what the geometry looks like, and now I want to show you how you build up blocks. If I jump back to the dictionary, these are the vertices, and then you define blocks. So it defines three blocks, and you do that like this. I will show you the two-dimensional uh, representation of the geometry instead of this, because here you have a lot of um, vertices and you will not see anything. Keep in mind that the geometry looks like this, but I will show you the two-dimensional representation. The first hex is made up by these eight numbers which represent the coordinates with these values. So the first block is made up by vertex number 0, 1, 3, 2, so it's 0, 1, 3, 2, and 8, 9, 10, and uh, I'm sorry, 8, 9, 11, and 10. So it's 0, 1, 3, and 2, and 8, 9, 11, and 10. The second um, block is made up by the vertices 2, 3, 6, and 5, and, in the, uh, and the, uh, by the other four uh, vert vertices with uh, 10, 11, 14, and 13. 
and the third block is made up by the vertices 3, 4, 7 and 6 and 11, 12, 15 and 14. Now take care of the orientation of the vertices. It's 0, 1, 3 and 2 and not 0, 2, 3 and 1. So take care of the orientation, this is important. And it is the same orientation in all the blocks. So it's 0, 1, 3 and 2 and then again the same counterclockwise orientation 2, 3, 6 and 5 and 3, 4, 7 and 6. Now for the mesh itself, these vertices are not the coordinates of your mesh but rather the coordinates of your geometry. But now we come to the mesh. You define the mesh uh, with, in, within these brackets. And here in the first block we want to place 25 cells in the x direction and 10 cells in the y direction. In the second block we want to place 25 in the x direction. It has to be the same number here and 40 in the y direction. Then in the third we want to place 100 in the x direction and 40 in the y direction. And also these values have to match. In the z direction we will place one cell because we want to make a two dimensional simulation. Now for the boundaries, for that I will jump here into the block mesh dict. I skip the edges because we do not need this for this tutorial, but I will come to that a little bit later. So for the boundaries, we define here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 boundaries, the inlet, the outlet, bottom and top and the obstacle. And you define boundaries like for example the outlet as a type patch and then with a face or several faces. For example, the obstacle uh, at the inlet and the outlet are patch. The obstacle should really be wall. So I will save that like that, as you will see later. But let's just check what this means. Uh, the outlet is made up by this face, 4, 7, 15 and 12. And I show you here the, uh, the entire geometry. So the outlet is made up by 4, 7, 15 and 12. 4, 7, 15 and 12. And the orientation is very important here because this defines the normal vector of your face. I show you here the normal, normal vector and how you remember the correct orientation. I pulled up here a picture which I found on Google. So I do not take credit for this picture. You can find it here. So if you think of the magnetic field around a wire, then you can um, find the orientation of the magnetic field with the right hand rule. If you stretch your thumb and you curl your other fingers and your thumb shows in the direction of your current, then your other fingers will show you the orientation of the magnetic field. You can use this exact right hand rule for the orientation of your vertices here. If you stretch your thumb in the right direction for the outlet now then and you curl your fingers then the fi your fingers will show you the correct orientation 4, 7, 15 and 12 for the outlet boundary. Now for the inlet boundary the outlet, uh, the I'm sorry, the normal vector should always point outwards of the geometry, out of the geometry. So if you point now for the inlet your thumb to the left hand side and you go for example to this face, then your fingers will show you a direction of 0, 8, 10 and 2 for this face here and 2, 10, 13 and 5 for the face up here. And this is the correct orientation. 
and the same is true for the the other faces you can try it out so then you have to point your thumb to the top or to the bottom but here we define a boundary called bottom a boundary called top and a boundary called obstacle and bottom and top are both symmetry planes and I will show you them here with this yellow boundary here and here and the obstacle is shown by this grey boundary. So the symmetry planes means, I will show you this here with this two-dimensional representation, the symmetry planes are here in the top and the bottom. This means that you can mirror your geometry along this symmetry plane to the top and the bottom. What you end up with, here is your geometry that we define here with the inlet and the outlet and you can mirror that to the top and to the bottom and then you can continue on mirroring it further on and what you end up with is a set of semi-infinite uh, semi long plates with a certain gap in between them with the, an inlet here and outlets here and you investigate the flow, the two-dimensional flow in between them. Now let's just go to the simulation itself. Zero. We use these vertices, uh, this refinement and this number of cell, cells. I will just type in block mesh and this will create the mesh. Here you see in constant polymesh we only have two files and now if I execute block mesh now we have additional files. I want to open up the boundary file here and now you see that there is an inlet, an outlet, a bottom, a top, an obstacle and an additional boundary called the default faces which has a type empty and since we did not specify all the faces so we did not specify here the front and the back plane block mesh will automatically collect them together into one boundary and set them to be empty because in the z direction we defined only one cell and here you see the symmetry plane and the obstacle is a wall and the inlet and the outlet are patches. Good. Before I start the simulation I want to show you at first the, the grid. I open up it in Paraview. I showed you in the last tutorial how to open up an open foam case. You can do it with the VTK format and with the control dig but there is a very very simple way to do that you just create a dummy file with the extension dot foam so i will just uh, create this uh, a text file by opening up a dummy file called let's just call it foam dot foam or i can just call it forward step dot foam i could type here in whatever i want i won't do that i just save it with uh, control o and exit. Now I have this file forward step dot foam. And if I type in paraview space forward step dot foam and press enter, now paraview will automatically know that I have an open foam file with this extension dot foam. Let's just wait until paraview opens up. Okay, we are here. I press apply. And this is what the geometry looks like. Surface with edges. And here you see the mesh. It's a rather uniform mesh. Here you see the blocks. Block number one, block number two here, and block number three here. And if I go back to our block mesh dictionary, we define it in the first block. For example, 10 cells in the y direction, 
And indeed, if I count this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 cells. Here, you can believe me, these are 25 cells, these are 40 cells here, and these are 100 cells. And in the set direction, we only have one cell, and we want to make a two-dimensional simulation. These are the front and back planes. Default faces here. The inlet is on this side. The outlet is on the opposite side here. Then bottom is here. Top is here. And obstacle is here. So it works. Good. So I, uh, I will show you the internal mesh again, like this. Good. Now we could start the simulation, but at first I want to quickly show you the initial um, conditions. Here you have P, T and U. We also have a temperature because we have a compressible solver here. I open up P, which is the pressure now, really the pressure with the dimensions of Pascal. We initialize the pressure to be 1 Pascal in the entire geometry. We fix the inlet pressure to 1. And we will have a fancy boundary condition on the outlet, but do not be concerned with that. And you have to specify symmetry plane on the bottom and top, because these are specified to be symmetry planes also in the, in the mesh. And then on the obstacle, the pressure has a von Neumann uh, boundary condition and uh, the default faces are empty. Let's just open up the temperature T. Here you see that the dimension is Kelvin. So there is no kilogram, no meter, no second. And the fourth entry here within the SI units is the Kelvin. The, these three are mole, candela and ampere, but in most of the open form simulations you will not use these values here the four important uh, units are kilogram meters and second and kelvin so the temperature is set to be one kelvin and this shows you that this case is a very unphysical case but it is good enough because we want to learn here block mesh the inlet temperature is set to be one the outlet is zero gradient again for Neumann and symmetry plane, symmetry plane, zero gradient on the obstacle and empty on the default faces. Now for the velocity, the velocity is initialized with three meters per second in the positive x direction. Three on the inlet. Then the outlet is zero gradient and symmetry plane, symmetry plane. And on the obstacle, we have the no slip boundary condition. This is why I changed here the obstacle to be wall, because this the obstacle is really a wall. And I want to show you these two dictionaries in constant turbulence properties. The flow is laminar, so it's set to be laminar here. And in the thermophysical properties, you can really set the thermophysical properties like um, the specific heat or the viscosity or the Prandtl number of your fluid. So I want to show you additionally the system folders, the, the system folder and the control dict, the FV schemes and the FV solutions in the control dict. We define the controls for the simulation. We say that we will start from start time, which is zero, which is good enough. And we will stop at end time, which is 10. We will use a delta T of 0.002. And in the first tutorial, we define the write, write control to be time step. So we said that every 20th time step we want to save or every 40 time step. Now we define the write control to be runtime, and in this case we do not define the number of iterations, but rather the time when we want to save. So it, we want to save 
after 0 0.5 seconds, after, after 1 second, 1.5 seconds, 2 seconds, until 10 seconds. In these steps. FV schemes, we will not change the interpolation schemes, we will leave it as it is. And also in FV solutions, we will leave the matrix solvers as they are, and also the, the residuals, and the number of inner and outer loops also. So now we will just start simulation here by typing in sonic foam. I press enter. And this will take a while, so I will stop recording now and come back when the simulation stops. Okay, so the simulation stopped after 10 seconds. Now let's just take a look at the results in Paraview. And there is this very handy button called Refresh, because if we would just go now to U, and uh, go to the next frame, then nothing really would happen because we, didn't, we did not load the results yet. So I go back to zero. Now if I click refresh, then I have access to the results of the, uh, in the saved open form solvers. Oh, I mean open form folders, I'm sorry. LS, now you see that there are the results and I can zoom in and this is what the results look like velocity and depending on your open foam version these results might be a little bit different but do not be concerned with that so this is the velocity this is the temperature this is the pressure. I go back to the velocity and let's just say that we find that the resolution here is not good enough and we want to change that. How do you do that with block mesh? If I go back to here to block mesh and take a look. Let, let's just uh, change the, the resolution here. And now I come to this simple grading part. Simple grading means the difference in the refinement in the beginning and the end of, uh, of your block. And here it's uh, 1 in the x, 1 in the y, and 1 in, 1 in the z direction. So this is why we have this uniform mesh. Now if we want to, we want to have a refined mesh here, a finer mesh here, and a coarser mesh here, then we have to type in here 0 0.5 and the same in the second block because we want to have the same refinement here and here. I just save this and now I will delete the results because we do not need them and you can type in for that rm, remove, space minus r. You need minus r because we are deleting folders and not only files. I delete them, press the mid middle mouse button, this will paste everything that I selected and I press enter, type in ls, now they are gone. And now I re-execute block mesh and uh, this will automatically overwrite the mesh files in constant polymesh. Press enter. Now I go back to Paraview and I go back to zero. Press refresh. Nothing happens. I have to reload this. And now you see that here you have a finer mesh than here. Now how can you control which side you can Refine and this is defined by the direction of your edges. And the direction of your edges are defined like this. I will jump to with that to the user guide. So open up your user guide. You will find the user guide in um, 
open form and then in doc, in doc. So go there and open it up on page 138. And here, the block mesh utility is defined. And here is such uh, an exemplary block. And the direction is uh, defined by your vertex number 0 and the edges which originate from this vertex. So all the edges in the x direction will have the same direction as your edge uh, originating from 0. So, so this is for the, the edge between 0 and 1, vertex number 0 and 1, so this direction. Then in the in this x2 direction, so this will be the y direction, all the edges will have the, uh, the same direction, which is defined by 0 and 3. And in the x3, so this is the z direction, all the edges, also curved, possibly curved edges, will have the direction like this edge from 0 to 4. So this means for our case here that vertex number 0 is here and in the x direction we have this edge is going from 0 to 1. I jump back maybe here. So from 0 to 1 this edge is defining all the direction of all the edges that are looking in the x direction so the direction is always this way in the positive x direction and the refinement is always defined as you will find also in the user guide The expansion ratio is the end width of your cell divided by the starting width of your cell. So we specified 0 0.5. So this length divided by this length gives 0 0.5. If you want to have it the other way around, we just type in, no, here in the block mesh dictionary, we type in. 2 and 2 save. I re execute block mesh, refresh, and now we have the refinement on the other side. Now you can always think about the orientation, or like I do most of the time, and most people I know do it all the time. I just try 0 0.5, and if it's the wrong, orientation then I just change it to 2. So this is the primitive way of changing it. For example I can also change the y direction here to 0 0.5 and re-execute block mesh, refresh and now you see here we have a finer mesh here than here and here grid is a rather coarse so I can change also the number of cells for example in the x direction to 50 and in the y direction to 20 so let's just do that 50 I have to change it also here to match and 20 block mesh and now refresh And now we have a nice refinement here. We could do the same here uh, along this edge. But now I want to uh, show you something else. I want to show you an, another alternative to simple grading, namely edge grading. And with simple grading, you can only define the refinement in one direction. So the refinement is the same for all four edges within a given block. So four, uh, for example, in the y direction, one, two, and three. And then here you have the fourth edge. And the refinement is the same for all four. But with edge grading, you can explicitly define the refinement for each edge.
and I will just copy this edge grading here, copy, and I will paste it here into my block mesh dictionary, and I will uncomment this first line. You can uncomment by by putting in slashes and I will just copy this to here and delete simple grading and use edge grading in the Z direction. So these are the four edges in the Z direction in the first block, but we really need here one because we only have one one uh, cell in the Z direction and so this would correspond to a simple grading of 1 and 1, 2 and 1. Now let's just check what we would uh, have here. So we have 1, so a uniform um, grading in the X direction and uh, a grading of 2, so we will have a fine mesh in the bottom and a coarse mesh in the top. But I also have to change of course this value here. And now I execute block mesh and I refresh surface, surface with edges. And now you see that really this is what we have. So a uniform grading in the X direction and a refinement here in the bottom and a coarser mesh up here. So with this you can change uh, you can change individual edges and if I now go back to block mesh and uh, for example change here one value to 0 0.5 so on one edge the refinement will be the exact opposite. Refresh and here is the same but, as you see, on this edge the refinement is inverted. And this does not make sense for a two-dimensional mesh, but for a three-dimensional mesh it might make sense. Okay, now I jump back to the user guide because there are two entries that I did not explain, edges and merge patch pairs because we do not need this for this tutorial, but with uh, edges, you can define uh, curved edges with splines, for example, if you need curved edges. So take a look at the user guide and also with uh, merge patch pairs, you can merge overlapping patches like you see it here. Good. So. What did we learn in this tutorial? I showed you how to use the block mesh dictionary and how to execute the block mesh utility. Um, I explained you what convertometers uh, means, the, how to define the vertices of your geometry, then how to build up blocks, how to define the number of cells within a given block, how to control the refinement of your mesh in a given block and how to define the boundaries here. Now this concludes this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something. I uh, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.